then. Huh. Okay. Um, Ira was mentioning that we have some return users uh, to speak in civic term, civic tech terms. So I wanted to do something I haven't done before, to be honest. Um, and that is to ask all of those who are completely new to our project to raise their virtual hands in Zoom. If you could do that, that would be great because I, I do see some familiar names there, but it's always easier to uh, to make a more accurate, you know, to have a more accurate idea based on that. So I see about three hands raised, two now, only two. All of the others know about us, three. Now it's three, okay. All right, I'll, I'll give people 30 more seconds to see. Okay, there's someone hesitant. No, they're lower, lowering their hands now. All right. Well, the the I think the bottom line is that most of you, if not all of you, are acquainted to some extent with uh, with our project, with our team, and with what we do uh, generally. So I'll try not to uh, bore you too much with the standard things. Um, but I did want to mention some uh, some upcoming activities in particular that might be relevant for for those who are here today. Um, what we are our main objective as a new funded project is really to to strengthen the role and the capacity of civil society representatives in the six eastern partnership countries right so we are we are in a way here to support you do your work in civil society better um and we try to do that in in different ways um one of them is the the hackathon of which you will be hearing about so i won't uh, touch on that one uh we also have uh, capacity building activities we have different courses that we deliver ourselves or we collaborate with other partners for. Um, and we have a, a, a parallel course now uh, go, going on on digital competencies, uh, which might be relevant. Some of you may, may be are also our participants there. But what I wanted to mention in particular is the Civil Society Fellowship Program. Um, in the fellowship program, since this phase of the project, we have what is called Civic Digital Fellowships. Um, and you, that's where the intersection with the hackathon lies, because with the Civic Digital Fellowships, we are looking in particular to support those who are interested to engage basically on civic tech issues, on issues that have to do with open data. Uh, so on all in all sorts of ways in which governments can be held into account, uh, different services for citizens. So it, it is very much linked and related and partly overlapping with, with what we do in the hackathon as well. Um, and we will have a new call for, um, and I think it will be the last call of, of this um, phase of our project for the for Civic Fellows in November. Uh, we, we, are, we are still, uh, it's, um, uh, yeah, it, it will be coming soon. So please have a look at, at that as well. And we will share in case you aren't already aware uh, of that, we will share the, the link to our website um, so that you can keep an eye on other opportunities that might be relevant for you. So it's not, if you are interested in civic tech, if you work on civic tech, it's not only the hackathon that is relevant for you. The civic digital fellowships are relevant as well. Um, I'm not going to cover, I think, wow, something is falling behind me, <laughs> to cover any of the other the other issues because they are not so relevant. But um what I what I wanted to to say before passing the floor back to Ira, and she has I, I think a very good and very structured presentation taking you through everything that you need to know uh, about the hackathon is it, it's really good to see 17 people joining us today because you know, if you haven't been involved in a hackathon before, if you're more on the civil society part, and this is something that's maybe not so familiar for you, I think it will be very useful for you to understand where different actors come in, uh, how the teams work together with the mentors, what is your role as a potential author of a civic tech idea. So um, it, it, should pro it should hopefully give you a good basis for uh, when you put together your application to, to the hackathon. And we are really happy that finally, after quite a break, you know, we will finally have also a face-to-face -face hackathon. Uh, we will start with an online ideathon, but then we will actually be meeting face to face in Kishinau, which is, I think, something we've all been waiting for because uh, that there are some limits to to the online uh, to the online interactions we can have. 
Okay, I'll, having said this, I'll pass the floor back to you, and I'll be here um, in the background. And if you guys have any questions, please try to use the Q&A. Uh, it makes it easier for us to, to track them. Thank you, Monica. Uh, yes, we will start with the Q&A, and then the second half, we just uh, basically give the floor to uh, allow you to talk so you can actually, we can actually go into discussion. Okay. Yes, as Monica said, finally, we're going to meet online, uh, offline, and I know that everyone is a bit tired, saying the least, of the online activities. However, uh, we next meeting in the beautiful Chisina, and I know January is not the best time to travel, of course, but Chisina is going to be beautiful in time. Uh, I've been there several times, and this is an absolutely lovely and very cozy city. Uh, uh, we're going to have some of the online activities as well. Okay, let me go through through the whole thing one by one. Uh, feel free to raise the hand, interrupt me, ask me the questions, and let me know what's going on. So uh, what is going to be happening? So in short, uh, we plan to meet, uh, almost correct, of course, 26, 28 January 2024 in now. Who's going to be participating? Uh, the hackathon is something that brings together several actors, as Monica said. And uh, and because it is offline, uh, for online activities, we're allowed to be more kind of stretch. For offline activities, we are looking for two types of the actors. Civil society activists on the one side. Uh, those uh, It means those that have some ideas of civic tech solutions and um, and the those people who can help actually with prototyping them, uh, they both apply independently, or sometimes they apply as a team, so together. So when you apply with an idea and you apply uh, to, together with a tech team to help you with a prototype uh, from the AP countries. Uh, what you are looking for, you are looking for support from the European Union to develop and launch your solution. Uh, average support is around 10,000 euro per winner. Uh, but if you manage to convince the uh, selection, the evaluation committee and the assessors, then you can go up to 12,000 euro per, uh, per project. You the, know, just to stop here, because of course we noticed only now. Yes, I also, 18th, yes. I know, yeah, so it's, I know. It's, I'll fix it before it, it, sending the people. The 28th, yeah, so that... Yes, so that <clears throat> it's good that they have it multi-type repeat, uh, repeated that it's 28th, and, you know, I don't think anyone is really confused with this. <laughs> yeah, they were right. Yeah, so the, so basically when we, yeah, we will, when we will share the presentation, it will be corrected. But yeah, it is 26 to the 28th, it's not the 16th. <laughs> 18th or anything like that. 26. Yeah, there is no way you can do it, vice versa. I mean, we are very talented, but we haven't invented the time machine yet, even though I wish we did. Uh, okay, so the participation in the hackathon is free, and uh, because the European Union covers all the expenses and all the costs, starting from the you know from the mentors, uh, mentors fees, and everything, up to the travel of the selected participants to Chisinau. We're going to be working in English which means that all the formal sessions like first final pitches, the webinar master classes, presentations and everything uh, will be delivered in English. However, it's up to you when you're going to be working individually with the mentors, you can always check with them what language is more convenient because most of our mentors as well as our team will skip like two plus languages as well as most of you uh, who are here and uh, so you're welcome. So the whole uh, the whole process uh, will consist of three stages. We will start um, uh, the we'll start with the online idea so on the first sixteenth December for uh, where the up to twenty five uh, authors of the shortlisted ideas of the civic tech solutions that we submitted within the call will be working with the mentors on developing, improving, and you know understanding better what they want to do. Uh, we find this process the i know that some of you already participated with us and know about this but for those who has not participated it's not that you have to be online every day no in general it will take you maybe something like uh we're counting all together uh up to like uh, 12 uh, 12 hours in total uh you will have uh, individual consultations there will be your first speeches final pitches um and there will be several webinars that you want to attend um, to make your to shape your idea, but usually it's a very uh, um, it's a process that 
helps you first of all to be better prepared and understand whether what you suggest to do is feasible feasible technically feasible in the terms of the legislation feasible in the financial terms uh, and how to make it more sustainable, for instance, uh, how to make it user, uh, more user-friendly, how to understand for whom you actually target this program. Uh, on the last day of the idea zone, when, uh, the selected, uh, the, when the authors of the selected ideas pitch their hopefully improved projects, significantly improved projects to the mentors, mentors and organizers, Monica in this case, they vote and come up with a, uh, uh, with a list of the 50 15 ideas uh, selected for the hackathon. This is where we meet in Chisinau. From there on, uh, you prepare already for the hackathon. It's not much to be prepared, uh, but uh, it's going to be some of the logistics. I know that there is like, you know, the time is like uh, almost two months between the events, like six weeks. And you should understand that this is because of the uh, winter break. It's nothing happening. It just also, you should you nothing will be happening on your side as well. We will try to do then the logistics as much as possible from our side. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, we also did the best calculation we could, and uh, these are the dates. Uh, we can't push it any further. And then um, the uh, on the hackathon, it's three days of very intense work, lots of fun. Uh, our mentors are absolutely uh, crazy. It's a crazy. It's a team. It's a crazy team of you know professionals with a hands-on experience. There will be no one who has kind of never ever participated in the tech project, never led a successful one, never failed one. Uh, and this is where they learned. Um, and then there will be your team, and you're going to be working on the prototypes. On the last day, you present your prototype, your pitch, once again, and based on those pitching. Participants, this time you as well, and the mentor selected up to five finalists who will be nominated for the award. And that's the third stage uh, where the where you uh, the finalists will be asked to submit the once again their proposal. So what they suggest to do with a couple of more details for the evaluators to understand it better and the budget, of course. Uh, during the hackathon, there is no need to submit to work on the budget. You just concentrate on the prototype, on the product. I see some questions, comments in the chat. Yes. Yes, Monica, thanks. Okay. With this being said, I see no hands raised. Let's proceed. Okay. So about the eligibility. You know, the main eligibility criteria, it's uh, uh, you need to be a citizen or a kind of national, as someone said, of, of one AP country. You need to be 18 plus years old. There is no upper limit, uh, but you need to be at least 18 years old because you might need to travel. And uh, the my, minus uh, unattending, traveling and attending, especially in times like this, it's uh, kind of, you know, one of things. And second thing, because if you're the winner, you will need to be able to sign the contract, uh, sign the agreement, get the payment and report to us. So there is a good justification uh, for this, you know, age limitation. You need to have a working language, a working level of the English language. No need to prove to us to the TOEFL test how to understand that your English is fine. If you can follow me, if you can follow the slides, you're good. I mean, if you are here, you're good. Um, and uh, in terms of the experience and skills, Again, uh, we want the people who come up with the ideas of the civic tech solutions have some previous civic engagement, which can vary from volunteering as a student, you know, helping local communities, being uh, a member of an established civil society organization, being a founder of civil society organization. It's like really can go from any option there is no restrict there is no requirement for you to be a member or of a registered civil society organizations you can be a, you can be a member of unregistered initiative civic tech initiative group of activists anything or just volunteer for the technical people of course you need to have skills that uh, will be useful when you create the prototypes of civic tech solutions as we are restricted with the number of the participants, we will give the preference to developers and designers. So if you are a technical expert, if you are a developer and designer, when you 
apply, you will see in the title of in the application form, application form for developers and designers, please do specify what kind of, you know, what you do. One tricky question, a residence in the, in the AP country or EU member state is not, is not an eligibility criteria. You can live, you can be a citizen of, for instance, Georgia and live in Germany and apply for the hackathon and be eligible. Or, you know, you can be a citizen of Georgia and live in the state and, you know, also apply and also be eligible. The only problem is that we can cover, for the select participants, we can cover your travel and trip on uh, to Chisinau to, uh, for the hackathon in Chisinau only from an AP country or a member state. I hope that's clear. Okay, I see the first q and um, it is mandatory in team is mandatory that Melbourne shall be present physically at the hackathon. Okay, I'm going to answer this question in a sec. Thank you, Tatiana. Team, the hackathon team. Okay, again, for the same, uh, for the same sake, let's go through the hackathon team. The hackathon, a hackathon team, at least in at this for 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 this very hackathon, consists of three persons. Uh, and I always keep joking, you know, when it comes to the ha offline hackathons and building the team, it's like, can you count up to three? Because sometimes I, I'm not sure. Okay, so the hackathon teams will consist of three persons. It's going to be the team lead or product owner, also of the idea, call it, call yourself whatever you want to. It's it's up, up, up to you. So basically, that's the person who came up with the idea. Uh, who went through the ideas on stage, who was selected there, who is like, you know, who leads the whole process, uh, who understands what the final product is supposed to be like, not in technical terms sometimes, but in terms of, you know, what audience it serves, what problems it, uh, it solves, and uh, what you in general going to do with this. Uh, I'm sorry for the uh, I'm sorry for for the him or her, but you know that's the people who get all the questions and all the troubles and whatever goes wrong, that's their fault. Okay, so but that's also one of the funniest ones because it's uh, you know the way you get the most challenge. Second person in the team is the UX designer, front end developer, or again whatever you call the person who is responsible for the look. Of the project, uh, of the product, or of the prototype at this very stage, right? We are not talking about the final products. Who is responsible for the look? Uh, very often, uh, this person uh, helps also the author pre to prepare the slides for the final pitch. Uh, you know, to kind of beautify them, and uh, also answer some of the question. And then there is a person who is responsible for the backend part to make sure that the whole prototype in general works. Uh, usually it's a developer, backend developer, full stack developer, and so on, depending on the type of the solution. Again, the whole thing is not uh, set in stone, right? The team composition is not set in stone, but uh, th this must be a person who is, uh, who is responsible for the idea and two people who are responsible for its technical implementation. Let's put it in this way. Okay, so what happens... And this is going to Tatiana's question. Tiana, is it mandatory uh, we are a team? Is it mandatory that all members shall be present physically at the hackathon? Tatiana, I hope I just answered your question. No, you will need to define if you have a team of more than you know, like three people, you will define within a team who actually can go. When you fill in the application form, you can in, put your team members there. Right. So basically those you consider. And I understand that there is a time between the application and the, you know, in and in January, the hackathon itself. If you are selected, I will go to this uh, immediately. Your team is selected as well. But then you, if needed, you can consult with me or you know, say we need to do the the last minute change. Okay, is it mandatory to be three or I can do it? Uh, I can do all of them alone. Oh, uh, Kamran, you are very optimistic. It's going to be hard to do everything on your own. Let me go to this. Uh, okay, so I'll start with your question. Go further. Okay, so what is also important about the hackathon teams? Yes, Kamran, answering your questions. You, it's not, you, okay, there are two options. When you go to the application form, and I will go through this, you can apply with your team or you can apply just with an idea. If you apply with a team, 
you won't be able to add more than two people technically just technically it is impossible so you will have to decide who who those two people going to be if you if you apply without a team you will build the team on day one um after your first kind of presentation of what you plan to do and uh, how it will be done i do something in the format of a speed dating uh, where those authors who need to build the team and the developers and designers who applied for the hackathon and were selected travel who they applied individually uh you authors quickly pitch the quickly pitch yourself and your project to the developers and designers and those who kind of say mm, i'm interested and i think it can help the person goes behind you and becomes a, a your team member um Important, please make sure you pitch it well. It's not you, the, you know, like who goes, it, we are, okay, it's not, a, it's it's a market, but in a different way, you know, we authors in this case, we are not the uh, buyers. <laughs> you sell your product in this case, right? So you sell your, uh, and the customers actually developers and designers who go and choose and pick because they understand better how they can help you here. And when we have very limited time, it's a, it's a kind of relevant approach. If you applied with a team, if your idea was selected for the idea, so if you idea, you passed it, improved it, then it was like, yes, you go for the hackathon, your team is selected automatically as well. Again, we will go there and we'll see that we don't ask any questions about your team experience. We ask about the role in designer. We don't ask for any portfolio links or whatever. It's your team, you will be working with the team, and it's your task and problem to make sure that the team is capable and that the team also speaks language, for instance, right? At a sufficient level. If anything goes wrong, as I said, you as a team lead, that's your responsibility. Uh, okay, done. Uh, welcome, Tatiana. Uh, as always, raise the hand. Uh, let me know. Uh, and um I, that's my kind of more advice for the hackathon but i all, always share it now listen to your team even when you apply even when you're about to submit the application if you apply with the team listen to them they are really really smart people uh they've been doing this for you know starting from the university or the college or the courses where they really start with the hands-on work and they can give you really good hints and ideas what to put in the application form especially when it comes to the hackathon and listen to your team. Uh, they will be very experienced. Some of the, I know that some of the applicants, some of the um, uh, developers and designers that we often have at the hackathon been working uh, for uh, in their IT sphere for like 15, 20 years. They are super experienced. So if you, they can really give you advice. If you do not agree with them, do not argue. Just, you know, like too much. I mean, uh, just go to the mentors. The mentors will be there to help you. That's eligibility to participants. That's about the team. Let's go to the solutions. Uh, we have a very kind of uh, colorful and beautiful uh, list of the solutions that are eligible and the spheres and, you know, like trying to explain what solutions are eligible. But I always say, here's a very simple checklist to understand if what you want to suggest, if your idea, fits the term of a civic tech solution. The first one, it's uh, it's a civic tech solution if it addresses some societal challenge. First of all, it's a challenge for a community. It can be a challenge for citizens. It can be a problem for, uh, yes, I see somebody raised the hand and lowered it, I believe. It can be, you know, whatever challenge this can be, you know, um, how do we report, you know, how do we report about uh, um, corruption, how, uh, you know, that somebody asked me for a bribe, how do we uh, come together, you know, how do we come together as a small village settlement community in the town and so on, and decide on what we do, you know, what we do in our yard, what we do at this territory, how do we count about the trees, I mean, ideas are endless, there is no way I can list all of them but be sure that this is a societal challenge and that what you suggest is not a not-for-profit product yes you, it may have some of the features sometimes because you want to kind of make it sustainable but that's not something you're trying to make a fortune with right uh so that's the first criteria first box check second 
that the product is designed to be used by citizens and or civil society, either activists or the uh, uh, or CSOs or whatever. So they should be your main users, the main users of your product. It's not for the government. Please do not uh, do not propose the ideas that it's like, oh, let's design something for the government to make the government's life easy. No, it's e-government and that's their problem and it's their headache, you know, how they're going to make their life easier. Uh, besides working with the government, it's it's a different story and it's absolutely different level. You know? So make sure that the end users are the citizens and or civil society organizations or nonprofits, how you call them often. That this is something you know, whatever you propose, it needs to have so second checkbox, right? Third, whatever you propose, it needs to have some coding. That's why. Uh, we cannot support, and you know, if you suggest doing like a campaign in social media, it's not a civic tech. If you suggest making videos to raise someone's awareness about, I don't know, pollution, it's not a civic tech. It's a different story. Please make sure that an idea that you propose, you will need someone to write the code or, you know, like at least use the libraries and put this something together, you know, build, use the libraries to put something together at the end of the day. Okay. And the fourth feature is that, that whatever you suggest will require users to be active and get a response from the system. This is what is called user, uh, user system interaction. That's why the things that, you know, if you suggest Okay, so if you say, okay, let's make users aware of pollution uh, and put a website with all of useful information, that's not a civic card. Uh, it's not a civic tech solution. Yes, it requires it to address social changes. It's designed for and used by citizens. It requires coding, but it's not a civic tech solution because there is no user, uh, user system interaction. They just go there and read, you know, and that's it. I made a whole list. I try to put all the together what is ineligible because it's easier to put together ineligible solutions than eligible. Well, you're re going through the list. I'm going to check the Q&A. Um, okay. Um, I have a question here about the ideas and also eligibility from Ashod. Uh, can, I, uh, can I submit an idea that we presented in 2019 and we're unable to, yes, and when the hackathon was canceled because, you know, due to the virus. Yes, if you submitted some of the ideas uh, for the previous hackathons, uh, you know, it for some reason uh, didn't go through, you know, whatever. Yes, you can do it. The only thing you can't do this year is to submit an idea that already submit something that already been launched as a product. So at this at this year we concentrated on supporting new solutions. That's why make sure that whatever you submit has not been launched yet. Okay. Um, let's go further. Something for your inspiration uh, and self check. Uh, actually, I can tell you that there are already more some of the ideas. So if you are, if you want to make sure if it is like, uh, is it, um, is my thing a civic tech or not, you can go there and check because whatever is published there, these are the civic tech solutions uh, on our website, uh, on our bank of ideas. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so continue. The, the key dates. So we are here. Right, we are at the call. Orange is the call. Orange are the main call dates. Uh, remember, you still have time. It's you still have thirteen days to apply for the hackathon because it's um, uh, it's uh, eleven p.m. Brussels time. Please work on your solutions. Send us the questions. Do not hesitate to reach out to us. You know and say, hey, I have something. Can uh, could you please advise and so on. We try to respond to your questions very, very quickly. Uh, we will do our best to inform all the authors of the shortlisted ideas by November 24th. 
uh, but bear with us. It's not only our decision. It needs to go through several stages of approval. So please, if it is, we'll try to, we'll do, we'll try to do our best because whoever is informed, uh, whoever is selected will be contacted first of all by us to make sure that you're still interested to participate because anything may change. Um, the once the team is formed, we go for the immediately for the uh, idea song. And we will start on the on December first. Uh, we and we will start with you with a formal opening on the hackathon and the first pitches. The second uh, the second part of the first pitches will be on Saturday, uh, December second. Uh, then you will work for. Uh, you will work for the um through uh, uh for those uh, two weeks uh, as I said with mentors with the webinars working on the ideas on this. 15th and 16th. Again, we're going to break the final pitches into two groups because there will be up to 25 ideas uh, are pre uh, present so for everyone to live. You will pitch your ideas to the mentors and organizers who will again once once again uh, select the up to 15 ideas to participate in the hackathon. And on December 18, it's the deadline for submitting the applications from developers and designers, right? Which means and brings me to another cool question, cool part. So if you are a te technical person, but you also have an idea, but you are not sure, you know, whether you kind of, you know, how to do, you can always go ahead first, apply with an idea. See if it works, uh, you know, go through the idea zone, because if for some reason, you know, you're not selected to, your idea was not selected, not you, your idea was not selected to participate in the hackathon, um you uh you can always apply as a developer or a designer we have cases like this in the past and, and it's perfectly fine uh one thing i want to say and this is like you know please do not be disappointed if you're not selected because it's not about you it's your idea it's not you personally, you're great people, you're smart because you're courageous, because you managed, you know, like you dare to apply, you came up with something, you understand many of the things, many of the concepts. If for this or that reason, your idea was not supported, you can always ask why, and we'll be always happy to provide the clarifications. And there is something you can learn from this and understand because maybe it wasn't just the right format of the event, not the right hackathon. Maybe you just, you know, you just should go to some uh, somewhere else to support for this. It's not about you. It's only about the ideas. Okay. And then the hackathon itself. Um, we go here through one more thing. So we're basically explained, but... I'll keep the dates and there is uh, usually the question that comes here is that, okay, why do I need to participate? You know, is it like idea so is it must or not and whatever? I already explained what it is. Yes, it is a must. Yes, it is mandatory, but only for the authors of the shortlisted ideas. If you applied with a team and your idea was shortlisted for the idea soon, uh, let your developers, designers, they may relax. It's only you as the author who will have to be there. It's actually very cool if they can join you, at least for the consultations with the mentors, because this can be very beneficial and you can, you know, like, uh, you can encourage them to join, invite them. It will be open during the webinars. You know, we, you, I will, if you ask me, I will add them on Slack. So they also understand what is happening there um but it's not a must it's not obligatory so if they miss something it's not a big deal if you miss something that's a big deal uh if you're a developer designer that's not your problem uh so that's only for the authors uh and before we go to the part with the you know going through the application forms i want to see if there are any questions feel free to raise the hand and voice the question at this uh, if you want to voice the question at this stage cool uh bias repeats the idea of another team uh, what should be done uh okay so the question is the following by Nadezhda. is it possible that our idea proposed by us repeats the idea of another team and what should be done then it's not a big deal you know it's like uh the i mean the documents for 
the documents for you know like submit uh, for writing you know like something we have microsoft word we have google docs we have um i mean the docs um, in 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 um, ios so we have the a bunch of the open source solutions and they still coexist it's fine and very often trust me that's why you have this idea of some very often mentors when they work with you, they will help you to target your idea and target your product in a way that this is actually unique somehow. So I hope I answered your questions. Yes, don't worry about this. Really don't worry about this. Um, Tatiana, yes, you will get the presentation. I will send this all around together with the uh, together with the Q and A and everything. Is there such a priority that focuses on early applications? Uh, no. You can apply the last night, and I'm afraid this is what's going to be happening, but I really appreciate if you submit earlier because uh, I can do administrative check, and we will be able, to, if there is something wrong in terms of, you know, administrative, administ if we see some of the faults with administrative part, you know, something missing, you know, uh, we can always go back to you. If you apply the last day, there will be no time to fix anything. Uh, okay. Okay, and this is the questions I can dismiss. Um, okay, anyone who wants to ask the questions to voice? I don't see any hands raised. Okay, let's go then about, okay, one more question in the Q&A. What examples of providing document about civic participation can be? Uh, at the stage when you apply, we actually do not ask for, you know, we actually do not ask for any supporting documents. I'll show it now. Uh, we trust you and in, it's enough for you that you give a link if you really participate in some initiative just give us the link show us where you participate and uh, if you have a letter of support that's great if not that's also fine okay I hope this answered uh, okay here <laughs> um, okay so here is something I want you to do uh, I want now to raise hands for those who are developers and designers here and who wants to apply as a developer and designer come run and notice this uh -huh, okay uh okay cool let me do something then uh something going vice versa uh, i will start with the application form for the developers and designers because it's a kind of shorter and i if you want to drop, I will let you go. If you want to, if I mean, it's up to you. If you are fine with this, give me give me some reaction, like likes and so on. You know, send me some hearts, and I will know that we are fine. And then I will go with a first application form for the developers and designers because there are few of them, and then it will be easier. Okay, cool. If you don't mind, then let's go. Let's go through that form quickly because it's much shorter. Okay, so if you apply for our hackathon, if you want to join the hackathon as a developer, graphic designer or designer, you know, UX designer, whatever, to help other teams with developing a prototype of a civic tech solution, your deadline for application is December 18, end of the day. So basically it's like uh, most part of you, it's gonna be around midnight or something after the midnight. Okay, so we go to the same registration page. You pick up the application form for developers and designers. It consists of several parts, but this is super short. Okay, so what you will need to do here, first part is always about your personal details. We need to know your first last name. Please give me the correct email address. You know, it's like, make sure that Gmail is uh, typed correctly because this is how we're going to be contacting you. And it's always uh, and in short, you know, a small investigation trying to understand why the email was bounced back for some of the reasons. Okay, so give us the correct email address. It applies to both. Uh, we're going to be asking you once again for your residential address. Uh, it's the... Um, I'm sorry, I didn't change it. So basically, please uh, indicate for us an AP country, you know, uh, uh, if you want us to cover this, uh, that must, you know, that should be an EU or AP residency. It's not, it's not an eligibility criteria. Once again, country of citizenship. Again, this is what your nationality is. 
we are not again asking at this stage for the proof but if we have the feeling we can ask for the for you know proof of your identity and of course all those selected you will need to give us the proof of your identity because we will be dealing with the tickets uh okay nothing super interesting very quick takes you maybe three minutes to fill it in your experience I uh, that's what I was saying. So your first, uh, you, we, you start with your relevant experience and you basically identify your uh, main area of ex uh, experience. So basically what you do. Uh, as I said also before, we're, we will prioritize developers and designers. In this case, um, you can select up to several one. If there is something else that you can do, you can always say, okay, I'm a full stack. Uh, I'm a full uh, I'm a full stack, but I'm also experienced in that. In data, please select other and add whatever is necessary. Your employment status is pretty much clear. It doesn't matter. You don't have to work at the CSO. You know, be fully time employed. And sometimes, if you can be even in a full time education, uh, or you can also you know choose other and say so. What is happening in your life right now? We are asking for your how many years of the experience you have. But the most important question is explain to me in 2.4 what you actually can do, right? So we can understand that based on this, that this is like, you know, and show what proof, proof this by showing the links of your successful projects. This, you know, some of you ex uh, explain this as a stack saying, okay, I know this is those, those, those programming languages and so on. And so on. That's cool. But uh, some of the people from the evaluation community they are not really tacky. So it's kind of very more helpful. If you explain this in a normal language, uh, understandable to your, mm, let's say, maybe not your grandma, but at least to your you know, the older brother or the sister. Okay, and it's cool if you can provide a link to the portfolio. This can be whatever. You can share some of your works on the, through the Google Drive or anything else. You can be uh, any file sharing. You can go. You can send us a link to a Behance as a for as a designer myself. I know this is where we mostly publish. You know, at least used to publish our projects. This can be even if your profile on the Facebook and LinkedIn. If you put there, you know, like your works. You know, if this is where we can do, or if you're a developer, this can be GitHub, you know, any repository that you kind of work with. Up to you. If you work for a studio, there are some sometimes uh, cases you say, okay, I'm full-time employed or, you know, part-time employed with a studio, with an IT studio, and this is what they do. Just give us a link to the portfolio of the studio and in 2.4, explain what, what else you did. And then there will be a short part asking if you have a previous experience of participate of working with civil society to questions that are not here, but they're kind of very simple. If you have the previous experience of working with civil society and if you ever participated in the hackathon before. That's it. That's all the application form for the developers and designers. Which brings me to the question, developers, designers, do we have any do we have any questions on how to apply? Give me some reactions. Give me, say, you're good to go. We got it. Okay. I hope that was, uh, the silence means exactly that. Okay. Let's go to those of you, majority of you, who wants to join the hackathon with an idea of a civic tech solution. Cool. Okay. I guess you got it, right? You select this form, apply with a civic tech solution. Go to the same page. And we'll go with the apply for the civic tech solution. Part one. And this is what I was supposed also to fix in the presentation, and I will do it. So that's very, very similar to the one you've just seen for developers and designers. So you, as a person, as a team lead, also the idea, whatever, this is what you write about you. Uh, because you are a contact person, you are the main contact person, you are the main responsible person, you are everything. So this is where you write about yourself. Okay. Uh, just again, residence, uh, residential address, we need to understand where you will be traveling from. It's not eligibility criteria. The most interesting part, part two, where you need to describe your, uh, your solution or the idea of uh, your idea. Working name, title, I think it's clear. Come up with something. For what country and relevant city and region you develop it? Please don't write to me something like, you know, India. 
because I mean, if you are an AP citizen, we expect your solutions to be used by citizens of the Eastern Partnership countries. <laughs> it's of course cool and we all care about the world in global, but uh, to be more productive, we want to be, we want to stay focused. That's why please focus on the Eastern Partnership countries. Uh, then I will ask you to give us uh, the short description uh, 2.4 you know, of your digital solution or your civic tech solution. This is where you need to prove to me in one paragraph and to the, uh, you know, uh, to prove in one paragraph that this is actually a civic tech solution, that it's ticks, it ticks all the four boxes that we discussed uh, on the top. Um, we, you will, I will ask to give, there, there is a question about, you know, describing the problem you want to address. And remember that should be social problem. Uh, you don't need to go too far. You can be as short as basically like two sentences uh, because we all work in the same environment so We and we are pretty much aware of the problem. So you should please stay concise here and be very focused, stay as, as focused as possible. The fact that it allows you for 300 words doesn't mean you have to put there 300 words. Let's put it in this way. Um, there will some of the questions that you do not see here. Technical implementation is pretty clear. Talk about the main functionality, what you want, you know, where this user system interaction will be coming from and well, what it will allow. Um, there will be a question about your business model. So basically your sustainability, uh, how it will be funded because once it's launched, it needs update, it needs maintenance, it needs, you know, like as a minimum hosting, as a minimum, you know, like domain name or, you know, if it is an app there, please explain to me where you will get the money from. Okay, imagine you won the hackathon, imagine you got this first support to develop and launch, but the money runs out, what you will do next? Uh, we will ask about your competition, coming back to the question, potential, maybe in your country, maybe outside, but let us know that you did some of the research right? And you're not trying to create another Facebook because maybe that's not really the best approach. You know, you're not trying to really copy the Facebook. Maybe there is a place, but not a copy. And uh, remember that there is a last question about the areas of e-development. It doesn't have the right answer. It's just your feeling, you know, how you feel about this. Questions here. Because this is the most important part and if you go to the guidelines, and guidelines are amazing, uh, I know they are very long, but they're very detailed. If you go there, you will see there the evaluation criteria. And you will see that most of your points will be coming actually for, you know, to, for your idea, evaluating your idea will be coming from this part. So if that's something you want to do. Okay, no questions, you can always raise the hands and whatever. Uh, and Monica, uh, could I, uh, I'm going to make you a co-host and could I ask you to, oh, oh you're a co-host, sorry. Uh, could I ask you to allow uh, allow the participants to talk so we can have a discussion yeah. afterwards? Yeah, 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 I can, I'll allow everyone to talk, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so uh, part three of this, you know, of the application form is basically your experience. Again, that's coming back to the question, how you prove nothing, just provide the link and name of the organizations, of the uh, activist groups, of the initiatives you are associated with. It's, it, 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 it is okay now, you know, it is okay as of now. Uh, if you do work there, describe your position, how, been lo uh, how long you've been working there and what you achieved and so on. Uh, again, if, you there is nothing that you can actually put there be honest and write non-applicable does not apply and that's it you you won't be able to leave the field empty if this does not apply just write the it does not apply to me i have no such experience uh okay um about your team so you decide you fill that in you go to the uh, wonderful questions uh, to the wonderful question about the team. So when you see, when you open that, you know, when you go to that part, you will see only one one way. Do you have a hack team to work with at your uh, to work with you at the hackathon? 
If you say yes, this is what you're gonna get. So will you, and as I said, you won't be able to put more than, to add more than two team members here. And uh, here, what that's the only information you will need to fill in about your team members at this stage. That's their first last name, country of citizenship. They need to be uh, EAP or uh, EAP nationals as well. Residential address. They are technical expertise. So basically, that's what you know. You ask them, mm -hmm. and if you go to the role in the team, it's a drop down list, and this is will be uh, where you have a chance to say they are developers. They are de or they are designers. If you choose other, and of course there is other, make sure that uh, it might not be super relevant. And then we will need to have a discussion. If your idea is selected to participate in the hackathon, then we might go back to your team and say, mm, are you sure you wanna do this? Because then you kind of, you know, put your, your own project at risk. But as long as it's your team, it's up to you. You will need to prepare a prototype in those two and a half days. And that will be your responsibility. Okay. A very important part. Do not include yourself. You, uh, we have all information about you in the first part. There is no need to repeat the same information about yourself. Uh, if you say, no, I don't have a team, it's absolutely fine. And then you basically, we ask you to say, okay, uh, based on your idea, what thing, what technical experts you might want to have. Um, and you know, it can be, you can select up to three. It doesn't guarantee we will get you because actually if uh, you go through the idea on your idea can be reshaped so strongly that, but this will give us an idea and help us to evaluate the applications from the developers and designers. And that's it. Uh, I'm going to the questions part. Super, I already see the question. Can we evolve in business analyst and now a team apart from a developer and designer? Okay, Mahamad, uh, do you have a mic on? Do you hear me? Yes, I'm Mahamad. Uh, hello, everyone. Should I speak okay. or maybe you answer my question? Well, okay. So how many team members do you have? Um, currently, I'm thinking of uh, three people, uh, including me. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I I'd like to be a business analyst in our project, and also we're going to have a leader and a developer, full stack okay. developer. Okay. So, I mean, if you already selected, right, uh, you will be working with the team you brought. You won't be able to get, you know, additional people there. Yes. I would suggest you to check that with your developer. And I'm kind of absolutely open with this, right? I mean, I know it's a very cool thing to have a business analyst and so on, but maybe it's worth checking with your developer and say, okay, will be, will you be able to put a prototype in two days on your own? Or you will need, you know, to get uh, uh, somebody to help you, you know, like somebody to do the front. Maybe you're a developer. Do you know your developer stack? Is he, is she, he, she, I don't know, full stack, back end, front end? Um, yes, yeah, he, he is a full stack developer, but I'm mostly thinking of as a front end. Yeah, okay. So basically, uh, as I said, because if you apply with a team, your team is automatically selected, right? I, if, if you, if you already selected for the hackathon, I'm, and going back through the applications, you know, I might go back to you and say, are you 100% sure? But at the time of the application, yes, you can apply with a business analyst as the second team member. Go select other and fill it in. I have one more question. I also yeah, have some background on machine learning. So may I be a machine learning model developer or something? Uh, you don't need to include this. Yeah, you can, um, you can, there is, uh, so when you go through the application form, there is something I didn't put in, you know, it's the very, very last question for the, and because it's not an obligatory question, you can skip it. But there is something at the very, very end of the form, uh, which says anything important that you want us, you want to tell us before, you know, submitting the application and that is relevant to this hackathon. If you want to put there saying, and by the way, uh, yes, I know that we have like, you know, one only one developer in the team and the second is a business analyst, but I am also a machine uh, ML developer. 
so I can help with this. So we're going to be fine. That's the place where you can do it. That sounds great. Thank you for answering. Most welcome. Okay. Uh, thank you, Monica, for letting anyone talk. Uh, everyone talk. Um, I see that people are not really kind of <laughs> uh, eager to ask the questions, and I'm a bit terrified if it is it's because you know everything. Or okay, uh, Tatiana, you, I see your hand raised. Go ahead. Uh, yes. So thank you, Irina. Uh, I was thinking if I'm applying with the uh, as an author and uh, my idea is selected, what if uh, happens that uh, developers, uh, well, do not understand or do not, uh, we don't match somehow. Uh, you mean is, is that better to find the uh, team? from the start and apply as a team like full okay. team with the developer okay Tatiana I think I got your question okay so you basically your concern is that okay my idea is selected you know I come to the hackathon and um and you know it's like and then it's just you know like who will be there will they understand me and everything um that's what I said trust trust your team members and what you want to do at the hackathon is you're not trying to create an MVP, you know, or you're, it's not even MVP level. You are just doing a very simple prototype that uh, during, the, during those two days that has two things in mind. First, to make sure that your solution is technically, is technically feasible, you know, that it really works. And the second one is to make, you know, because for the final pitch, you will need to show how it will work. And uh, in most cases, uh, if you are then selected as a finalist and you do this, uh, I, I've seen it very often Then yes, it changed, it changed a lot. You know, it's a, it changed a lot in terms of the appearance and so on. But then, uh, but during the hackathon, you will mostly work on the, you know, like very, very basic functional, very basic, you know, presentation of how to give the look, to give the feel to the mentors, to the other participants, you know, trying to prove your idea and push for this. So don't worry about this. So I just need to go with the flow and the express yes, my just, idea and modulate it together. Yes, <laughs> okay. and uh, we have wonderful things when people were applying, and this is this happens a lot when people were applying for the hackathon, you know, with the idea of the especially at the first, you know, during our first hackathons, and it's like it was something crazy. Everyone was applying with a mobile app. It's like we had uh, fifty applications, let's say, right, and uh, two thirds of them were it's like a mobile app. And those that were selected to participate in the hackathon, all the mentors were like, uh, you don't need a mobile app. So after two and a half days of hard work, they actually, most of them finished with not an app, but different types, you know, different types of products, chatbots, you know, uh, mobile solutions, you know, extensions and so on. So you, sometimes you even just end up there and the mentors help you to reshape and review the technical implementation of your idea to such an extent you can't imagine okay mm, okay thank answered. you very much uh, yes. most welcome uh okay i think uh that's it um, there is something else okay let me then okay so before we go there if nothing comes to your mind please do and then it comes do write to us also if you apply and there is a problem with online application form do write to us if you are from Belarus, uh, if you're a Belarusian activist, and you, especially if you're based in Belarus, and you don't feel secure to apply uh, through the online form, please do write to us. If you go to the guidelines, there is an email uh, in the mail, a uh, Proton email. Do contact us and we will try to accommodate you. Your safety goes first in this case. Okay. But if you don't have any questions, maybe some of those are going to be relevant for you. Um, okay. Uh, some of you already applied for the fellowship program and uh, some of you wonder, okay, I already applied for the fellowship program. And sure, can I apply for the hackathon at the same time? Because yes, you can. <laughs> Just a very short and simple answer. Yes, you can. 
uh if you are concerned that your english uh, with the, with the english language skills i can promise you there won't be english language test we won't test you it's okay it's okay to make mistakes I, it's like we all do mistakes we'll be there to help you uh i know that pitches can be the most problematic part and we will help you even with the pitches i mean that's not a big deal um uh, the hackathon guidelines saying i can apply only with an idea of a civic tech solution i already started like developing something well as long as you have not released it you're also fine to apply okay so what we cannot support this time is uh are the products that are already in the on the market in this case we talk about the civic tech products but still these are the it products and if they're already on the market Sorry, we can't help you this time. Otherwise, yes. With this being said, um, I want to thank you for the attention and we're slightly over the time, but I hope it was useful to you. Um, I will stop sharing and I will uh, stop the recording. If I find stop the recording. Uh,